Let us join our hearts together in prayers of adoration and confession. Let us pray. O holy God, how wonderful you are in all your ways. We thank you that by your powerful word, you created the vast universe and called it good. We praise you that you so ordered that creation with the gift of time by which we mark our days and nights, our months and years. We praise you that by that same powerful word, you came among us in Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth, to tell us and show us who we are meant to be. We praise you for the great gift of your Holy Spirit, who teaches us, comforts us, convicts us, and fills us with love, joy, patience, and self-control. When we acknowledge these wonders of who you are, O great and mighty God, we also recognize that we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the designs and desires of our own hearts. We have offended your love and your holy law. We have failed to do those things which we know we ought to do, and we have done those things which we ought not even think of doing. There is no help for us except in you, O God, whose character is always to have mercy. Spare us, O God, as we confess our faults, and restore us who are penitent, as you have promised in Christ Jesus. And most especially we pray, O God, that we might ever after live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Here the great promises declared to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Those who seek, find. Those who ask, receive. Those who knock have the door to eternal life open to them. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday of Christmas is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning at the seventh verse. Hear this word. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor. Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say this, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd does a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. For thus says the Lord, I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied 
with my bounty. Here ends the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Holy One, as we hear your word, may it draw us to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly with each passing day. Amen. Celebrations always mean food. Christmas, birthdays, anniversaries, the turn of the year, Easter, national holidays of Thanksgiving, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be food. But after the celebrations, we also always have to deal with the food that's left over. Leftovers. Lots of people groan at the idea of leftovers. But at our house, we actually like the leftovers. In fact, we'll often make more than enough for a meal so we can have leftovers. And of course, at this time of the year, after the holiday dinners, we often hear people complaining about all the leftovers when we should actually be giving thanks that we enjoy such bounty. We see recipes popping up in newspapers and magazines for what to do with the leftover meat, the mashed potatoes, the yams, the beans, or other odds and ends in the fridge. But that never seems to be a problem in our household. There are lots of things to do with leftovers. We can reheat them and have the feast all over again. We can boil the leavings together and make soup. We can add a sauce and change the whole sense of the meal. We can have sandwiches or casseroles of various sorts. But I know, of course, that some people simply pitch them out. But this child of Depression-era parents finds it nearly impossible to do that. We grew up knowing such phrases as waste not, want not, or use it up and wear it out, make it do or do without. Another good thing about leftovers, we have certain friends that we could phone up and say, hey, we've got such and such in our fridge. What do you have in yours? And we'll put the bits and pieces and ends together, leftovers, and have a grand meal for all of us. Leftovers. The prophet Jeremiah speaks about leftovers. He speaks from a time when many of the people had been exiled from their homes and makes this plea, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant, the leftovers of Israel. And God responds, see, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor. Together, a great company, they shall return here. They were leftovers. The scraps of the nation gathered up from here and there. Some might consider them of no value. The non-functional of a society just leftovers to be thrown out. Maybe you feel as if you were leftovers. You got that dragged out post-holiday feeling. Don't feel much use to anyone. Devalued, invisible. I think also even as the church, we might feel like a small remnant, leftover, undervalued, overlooked, Ignored, neutralized, disregarded. The handful of the faithful who show up 
for low Sundays, and we seem to have a lot of those in this time, don't we? We hear it expressed, why would anyone want to bother with the church? They're just left over from a bygone era, nothing important to say anymore, holding on to those old irrelevant beliefs, singing the same old song, not much use to anyone. Leftovers. It would be easy to fall into a cycle of collective self-pity over such a state of affairs. But our scriptures remind us that the Lord is an expert at making something good out of leftovers. Hear Jeremiah again when he says, He who scattered Israel will gather them up and keep them. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, the oil, over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. For thus says the Lord, I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them sadness for joy. And I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty. Bounty. The leftovers are gathered up and turned into a bountiful, joyful feast. When we feel like leftovers, either as individuals or as the church, we need to remember these words of Jeremiah. Indeed, throughout the Bible, there is the theme of God's preservation of the faithful remnant, the leftovers of the people. No matter what the world may perceive and say of us, or perhaps what we even say of ourselves, God's truth and God's word assures us that God's steadfast love never fails. And that is such good news. The leftovers, the ignored, the disregarded, will be filled with joy and radiance. In the book of Ephesians, another of the appointed lections for the second Sunday of Christmas, God gives us some clues as to what God will do with the leftovers. To sum up, in not so heavy theological language as Paul uses, and in the light of today's theme, as a backdrop, God has something to make out of the leftovers of our lives. And that may be an understatement. God doesn't leave us sitting in the back of the fridge till we have fuzzy green stuff growing all over us. God redeems. God salvages. God does not throw out the leftovers. In Jesus Christ, we are blessed beyond what we can imagine or suppose. In the bleak midwinter, God promises Easter hope. We believe in that God who restores, who brings light and life, who rearranges the leftovers of our lives like a master chef and makes them fit for the king's table. God has the recipe, all the wisdom and insight to gather up all things in Christ. God stirs them together and guess what? Gives us the leftovers as nourishment for the world's 
hungry souls. As Ephesians 1 reminds us, that is God's purpose. That is God's will. That is God's good pleasure. So if you feel like leftovers sitting in a spiritual fridge, give yourself up to God. Give the leftovers up to God. It's amazing what a transformation God can make. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.